and now that becomes a problem for you. Also, there's the aspect of cyberbullying and child pornography. People want to increase their YouTube videos, um, the views. People want to increase their followers. People want attention. People want people to follow them. They want consumers. And so they would rather bully someone or post illicit videos, pictures of people or even children just so that they can make money. And trust me, most of these uh, platforms, people have monetized them and so they make money out of it. It is time wasting. It is time wasting. It sh I mean, time wasting should have even been the very first point and it should have been in cups. You can sit down and spend hours on your phone, on your screen, from one social network platform or one social media platform to the other without even realizing how much time you may have used or wasted or lost. It is time wasted. And then there's the issue of privacy. Sometimes, I mean, these days, the developers have linked these platforms. So that one thing you post here can go here, can go here, can go there. There's, there's no much privacy these days. There isn't much privacy these days because of our social media. I mean, you take a picture with someone because, um, because she achieved some level of success in their life. The person doesn't want it to go out, but people wouldn't even know how to respect the other person's privacy. And so they end up posting it. Now, everyone knows. I have a friend who has a cute little baby. She doesn't want to be posting her baby. But now, because I, I want to post a picture of myself and my friend with the baby, I end up posting a picture of myself and the baby, but I take out my friend. At the end of the day, I didn't post my friend and the baby. I posted me and the baby. But the whole point is that she doesn't want her baby on social media or on WhatsApp or anywhere. But because of some of these platforms, I mean, people people breach people's privacy because of some of these platforms. And if you are not careful how you manage or use these platforms, you may become a victim to any of these disadvantages that we have mentioned. And even the more ones that I did not include in this list. So how then do we manage these networks and relationships so that we can use them to our advantage? The very first thing I would say is for us to set and respect boundaries. You need boundaries when you are on social media. You need to know that if this is LinkedIn, or if it is an email I am sending, if, if I am communicating with someone on a specific or a particular platform, I need to respect the person's boundaries. I need to respect the person's um, uh, boundaries. Yes, exactly. You don't just go, you, you are opening someone's profile and you have seen the kind of profile that a person has built for themselves. And you go there addressing them anyhow. I mean, they will, even in a professional setting, take the virtual space off. We take our professional relationships in our workplaces. You cannot just walk into your MD's office and say, Chairman, netizen. Especially when he's in a board meeting. No matter how friendly you are with the person. For any relationship to thrive, be it family, be it friendship, acquaintance, whatever, even when you are with acquaintances, that is the more reason why you should have boundaries in place. When you have boundaries, people do not exceed to disrespect you and you end up not disrespecting others because you are able to do as and what, uh, what they want you to do. In your professional setting, please learn to keep things professional. You need to be able to separate the social life from the professional life. If you are in a professional setting, look at the, the example of the email I, I mentioned. The person had the qualifications. But look at the kind of email you are sending to someone who is offering to link you with someone who can give you a job. I mean, the person was very generous enough to have replied to the email and told the person that this is not how to send a professional email. 
I would have just automatically sent it to delete, spam, archive, whatever. You learn, you learn to keep things professional. No matter how friendly your bosses are with you, no matter how friendly your superiors are with you, when you are dealing with them on a professional level, learn to keep things professional. If you want to be able to build yourself on these platforms, you need to stay up to date in your field. You, if you are able to stay up to date, you will not just imbibe anything that anyone or everyone posts. Because trust me, people post things that they think they know, but sometimes those are not the real things. Take the devotion Grace used this afternoon or this evening, for instance. If she had not gone back, revisited her notes, revised, and said, oh, I have, I have been taught the story of... Um, uh, Nicod uh, Lazarus, right? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, sorry, thank you. I have been taught the story of Zacchaeus from Sunday school. And so I am very familiar with the story. Would she have been able to discover this aspect too? Please, we need to stay up to date in whatever field. If you are not ready to learn, it is in there. Be ready and willing to learn. If you are not ready to learn, you cannot grow. And you cannot grow your platform. I mean, people want new things every day. People want to read new things every day. People want to consume new things every day. Even you as a human being. If that is the same food you are eating over and over again, come on, you'll get fed up. So you should be ready to learn. You should be willing to learn. There's a difference between being ready to learn and willing to learn. Some people are ready to learn, but they are not willing. They want to learn, yes. But it's like they, they are not ready to avail themselves to be taught. If you are not able to do these things, you will not be able to use social media or social networks to your advantage. You will not be able to capitalize on relationships to your advantage. There should be mutual respect. There should be mutual respect. You cannot just be looking down on people because they reach out to you for a service. And you cannot just be looking down on people because you think, I mean, you, uh, you check their profile and your profile oversees or supersedes theirs. There should be mutual respect, even in relationships. You can't tell me you have a partner you do not respect. How then do you expect the partner to respect you back? So mutual respect is very key if you want to manage and grow a relationship or a social network. These things or these relationships or networks should be built on trust. I mean, you can't, before you go to Instagram to order something, you need some proof of trust to show that the person will not dupe you or scam you. That is the same way before people will patronize you, before people would be willing to go and come back to visit your profile or your, your, your account and learn from you. They would want something that they can trust. I should trust that this person always has new content that is educative. You should be ready to serve. You should be ready to serve. There is no re relationship that can thrive without service. You being here is an evidence of your readiness for service. Because nobody is buying data for you. You may be even older than Grace, who is sharing this mentorship program is. But at a point, because she is the leader, you, sh you would be willing to serve. You should be ready to serve. And it is only through that that you will also learn or pick up something from her. Communication should be open. And when I talk about open communication, please, communication is not just verbal. Even written communication counts. You should know what to write at what time, what to send at what time. I would advise, and I keep hammering this on my friends, that when you are texting me, don't use shorthand. Because 
you keep using the shorthand and at the end of the day you will, you will just mess up your written english communication should be open when someone does something that does not sit well with you you should be able to call out and tell the person that look this is what you did and it didn't sit well with me so you don't do this you should be able to correct the person it's all part of open communication but you can't just be on social media and someone just pops up in your chat and then i mean is disrespecting you and because we are saying mutual respect or yes respect so you don't want to talk back no sometimes you don't have to talk back sometimes some things are not worth your energy but you should be able to set those boundaries and communicate to the person that these these rules do not apply with me and please at every point in time whatever you are consuming on these social media platforms or whatever relationship you find yourself in whatever you are doing should ensure growth remember as you are going back to the person's profile to view their account you are growing their profile you are growing their account if it is facebook that you are watching videos from remember that if it is a monetized page then they are making money from your views and your frequent visits at the end of the day are you just growing them and not being groomed or and not growing yourself you should ask yourself that i'm not sure if this mentorship program was not growing you you would still be here at this point this is week 20 so meaning you have done how many weeks i am not sure you would still be here so whatever you are consuming online just make sure that it is growing you whatever you are consuming in a relationship when i say consuming i'm not just talking about literally eating food or eating something no but you should make sure that your relationship with someone a friend a brother wh whoever it is it ensures growth if it doesn't ensure growth then please you need to advise yourself you need to, because it is only with that that you'll be able to filter out what is needed what is necessary and then you would be able to separate things that are unnecessary and not waste your time on them and when you are online or when you are in, you are spending time in your different kind of relationships please always watch your clock there is no more time to waste the time you are wasting viewing or watching people's videos online could have been used or invested in growing yourself reading marketing your services or your product so please you need to practice good time management watch your clock you need to practice good time management so these this, these are the very few things that i managed to pin down i'll end my presentation here and then if there are any questions or contributions that come up we address them and then we move on from there thank you very much thank you too i have learned a, a great deal honestly lots of the points are just so valid and sometimes i <laughs> i just wish that i mean we can have a group of people that we are conversing about one or two of these topics and i mean educating ourselves and how we can go around it but it's 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 not possible maybe sometime in the future and with the shorthand thing you talked about you know i think last two years or so then i also started the same thing and so now I cannot even remember the shorthand for high and all of those. Like I've forgotten it totally. <laughs> it's not like intentional, but because I decided that I will write things in full, 
it has made me forgotten every short time. And now when someone tests me and they've written that DAT, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? So what you are saying is very true. And we would have to train ourselves to be able to do that. And this um next year, what I have decided to challenge myself with is I want to get my punctuations right, even on social media. So it's not like I'll just write a sentence and my punctuations are not right. I want to keep that one to in mind and try to do it right, even on social media. And that's a challenge I've given myself um, as one of my resolutions for next year. So thank you so much. This thing is I don't know how to say. <laughs> I, I remember that when I started dating to the same thing, my 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 fiance will be like, anyone who writes any short cards, I mean this thing should be done to the person. And it's like that. And for like two years now, every communication of ours is there's no short cards. Not even high H Y. No. Everything is in full. You know, so it's important we learn some of these things. So I'll just open room for questions. I have my list of questions. I mean, that's how I squeeze juice from people. I just want to know the right thing people are doing. So I like asking questions. If you leave me, I'll ask all the questions. But I want to give my mentees the, the first 10 minutes to ask any question that is on their mind and then I'll maybe ask two of my questions, then we will close. Is there anyone with a question? Hello, Think please about I have something. a question. Right, okay. You can ask, please. Okay, um, thank you. And please, my question is, uh, when she was talking about um, LinkedIn, how is um, people use, use LinkedIn for and other things? Um, I actually had an um, interaction with a lot of people and I realized that when people go on LinkedIn, it seems it gives them pressure because when they get there and they realize things that are people are that thing people are doing. But when I always go on LinkedIn, I think I rather find a motive because I feel like if this person was able to do this, then it means I'm capable of also doing that or more of that. So when you go on LinkedIn, my question is, how should we see all those things? Things that people post, things that people have done, where they are progressing, how should we see them? Should we see them as pressure or as a source of money? Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. My question is, those that you find inspiration from, are they your mates? So why did you hear me? Hello, Miss Grace. Sorry, please come again. Yeah. So I was just trying to get some clarification. I was, I'm like, those that you usually find inspiration from, are they your mate? Oh, no. Sometimes it can be a mate. Sometimes, too, no. There are people that you don't even know. But maybe they might be in your field of maybe job or grammar. Right, okay. So I'll leave it to Miss Rusman. Okay. Um thank you. So uh, so you see, um you should know yourself. You should know your limits. The same post that you will find as an inspiring post from someone who is your mate. Someone will read it and start feeling very intimidated and start seeing less of themselves. That is why I kept emphasizing on know what you consume. So yes, sometimes these things are there to motivate us. But I just want you to keep at the back of your mind that sometimes it's 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 not the reality. Like Air pressure. Sometimes I air pressure. And we should give ourselves some time. You might hold that breathing space. The fact that 
your mates may have posted that they have completed their PhD. Sorry. That does not mean that you should go kill yourself because you have not completed your PhD. Ideally, you should be able to happily congratulate them and wish, tell yourself, I will push myself to do the same. But that does not mean that if it hasn't come, you should kill yourself for it. So as an individual, know yourself. Know your, your limits. Know how much you can consume. And then you, you are able to filter out or be selective about what you consume. That's what the pressure is everywhere. Please, I hope I have answered your question. Yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> so, Ms. Rosman, let me just add something to what you just said. So, so, the truth is that the pressure is there. Honestly, I don't know someone who has a very tough mentality like I do. Like, I have a very tough mentality. If I say I'm doing something, I you cannot distract me. That's, that's a thing. And I am not really distracted by the life people lead. But sometimes I'm surprised that this kind of pressure also gets to me. So if if she's saying it is real, honestly, it is real. It is so, so real that even, is it this week or last week, I experienced one. I was what. <laughs> I was walking around in the neighborhood of YouTube, just trying to get an educative video to watch. And then I went to open one video. And I mean, the one tiny, smallish lady who was like 29 or so, and was talking about acquiring three degrees and three degrees in how many years? Very short years. <laughs> She's married, giving birth to two kids, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. And I felt like I'm a figure. Actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> when I started feeling that way, I, I most of the time, the person I speak to is my fiancé because I'm 24-7, we are in touch. And he's asking me, what, what video did you watch? What did you read? Because he knows that obviously it's from someone. <laughs> I said I did not watch anything. <laughs> Today is my confession. I said I did not watch anything. Meanwhile, it is a video that made me feel like that. And he, and he's like, you are living your best life. So why are you feeling like this? Where from this? You know, so the pressure is really real, Rosemont. The pressure is, is so real. But I think that it's be an inspiration, not like I think. And for me, 90% of the time, it is an inspiration, but that 1% can really do something to you. There's another video I watched on YouTube, and it was about, I don't know if anyone heard about the case in, uh, in what was the name of this country? Oh my God. Johannesburg, yeah. Um, a city in Kenya and some robbers went to rob a church or something and then I was listening to a commentary on that and one guy how the guy was talking about I mean the, the church people, the Christians and how they are collecting people's money so it's a right place for the, for, um, the thieves to go there and get money I mean, they are holding the money and that is where the money is so let them also go and get their portion. Oh, Charlie, how he was saying it and talking about Christianity, my whole like, if anyone knows me, I'm a Jesus girl. But that day, there was like, my energy is like zero and I'm feeling demotivated. I'm like, some of these things we listen to can really, really affect us, honestly. And that's why sometimes I feel like Christians should also put their voice out there. Else the negativities and, and all those human um human comments and human ideologies are too much. 
and it can get into people's head and it will make us behave like as if we just created ourselves, you know. So it's it's real and we have to filter what we listen to on every social media platform. So Rosma, let that be an inspiration and not um and not a pressure. But when the pressure comes, just apply what Miss Rosmond gave you. Sorry, I'm using Rosmond Rosmond. <laughs> <laughs> I should be calling you Sewa. <laughs> so when that oh, pressure okay, comes. Rosemond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, she's oh, also hi. Rosmond. Hello. <laughs> 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 when that pressure comes, please apply what Miss Rosemont has given you. But the pressure right. is real. Maybe you haven't gotten there yet, but you get there. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> is there any other question, please? Any other question? Okay, so let me ask one of my questions. My question is, uh, what's your perspective about dating virtually or trying to find a, a, a relationship on the virtual platforms? What's your perspective? How do you see it? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So I would say I am a little bit biased on that. Um, you you don't go on social media to find a boyfriend. If it comes, fine. Because people are not real. Trust me. That is what I think. People are not real there. Everybody is trying to post their best life. So it's like you 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 hardly get the real version of someone. Then if you are fortunate enough to get the real version of someone, social media is there to help you communicate, yes. But how how much is it doing for us? Now people take their their, their partners' phones and then they are they are <laughs> they are looking for who is he texting. Who is he sending pictures to? Who is he receiving pictures from? I mean, real people are out there, yes. But again, you have to be selective. You have to have your filter on. You have to have your boundaries on. Otherwise, you will fall prey to some of these scams. I don't know if I answered your question, though. Yeah, so it, it, it means that for you, you wouldn't really want to entertain anyone who enters the game and wants yes. a relationship with you. you. It even depends on how you enter my DM. You remember sometime, I think I posted on my status, one guy yeah. on LinkedIn texted me and he was he was telling me he wanted to he wanted to get to know me, date me, have uh, go out with me, get to know me. I was like, you don't just go into someone's chat and then say these things. You first have to be all the rapport. You have to greet, like let the person accord the person some respect. Now they and don't want like, rapport. No, 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 no. He, he was just telling me, uh, even <laughs> big, big people are his friends. <laughs> now he's even friends with big, big. I was like, no, no, I'm no, thank you. I'm not interested in going out, having fun with you when you want to. I'm not. I don't do that. I'm not interested. Even big people are like his friends, and then they they don't they don't shy away from. Him. I was like, you should go and associate with his big people. <laughs> so I took a time to send him a long message, and I lectured him. I was like, you don't text people like that. You should learn to respect yourself and respect others. And now he comes back to say he's sorry. But why would you? <laughs> why would you? Why wouldn't you? You know, um, accept. I'm like, you have apologized. Just anything. As a Michelle, why I been I'm like, yes, I be phone you in the past. <laughs> I mean, you see, people are just everywhere. So <laughs> so in their lack of respect for people. So me, if you trust me, if you enter my DM, whether WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever, if you enter my DM and then you don't come 
with um respect. Well, yeah, me there, me view. It's either I will ignore you or I'll give you a long lecture. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so I think when you are out there, you should you should you should set your boundaries and make them known. You communicate your boundaries, and then if it is meant to be, the real person out there will come. Right, right. That that's that's right. I asked the question because one mentee from last year contacted me about one guy he's met on Facebook and on on LinkedIn and I mean they've started talking and the guy is interesting and all of that and he wanted to know my thoughts about it and all of that. So that that, that was the reason why I am um, asking these people. Maybe someone is also it's here. About it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean when you are talking with people you may never know. People can talk really nice but when you meet them, everything about them is, is so different. And I mean, guys are guys. Sometimes they they want to get what they want to get. That's why they are treating you like that. So I asked that question. Maybe someone will just take it just out of it. Any other question, please? We are way behind our time so that we just close for the day. Cindy, are you a Bolterian? <laughs> Any question, please? <laughs> Any question? Okay. Silence means we don't have any question again. Then let's let me ask my last question and then we'll just close. So my last question is So Rosma, you know we have a lot of friends right from primary school to uni and I mean you've gone through postgraduate and all of that and you are getting friends from everywhere and they are piling up. How do you sustain this friendship or what's the strategy to use to, to be able to keep them and it will not be like, oh, Rosman, because you, I mean, you did your master's and you are working here, so your you've left your DHS friends or blah blah blah. How how do you manage that? <laughs> okay. So with that, um I have something I usually do. Sometimes I dedicate a day. I can just decide okay today I'm going to go through my contacts and check up on the people that I haven't heard from in a while. Okay. Trust me, I'm not I'm not when it comes to checking up on people I'm not the best person at that because I like to I like to keep my boundaries and I like to respect other people's boundaries. So if you know not like I said there are levels of friendships. There are levels of friendships. So you cannot just get up and unkwana dey be our text you be dey be it's not possible. There are levels of friendships. Some people are acquaintances. You meet them, you vibe, you move on. With your life. Some people are just casual friends. You meet them, occasionally you check up on them and then you you move on with your life. Occasionally you come back and check up on each other. And then there are people who are very close friends. And trust me, you shouldn't just keep anyone as a close friend. You should be selective about who you keep as a close friend because they end up influencing your life in one way or the other. So based on that kind of, um, should I say, written, or I won't call that reason, but based on those levels of friendships, I decide on who to invest the greater part of my time checking up on. And who to um, check on 
occasionally. So that is what I usually do. So if it's someone that I check up on occasionally, it will more maybe once a month or something. Now, even that one, it might be too extreme. I realize, okay, it's been a month or three that I had I've heard from you. I can just pick a phone and call you to see how you are doing. But again, it comes back to the level of friendship that you have with the person. So you should be able to group your friends, which are which are which of them are my close friends, which of them are my acquaintances, which of them are my casual friends. You should be able to group them, and then I think that works for me. So I don't know if it works for you though. Okay. Um. Okay. So knowing your circle and. And giving each one their fair treatment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you for the knowledge shared tonight. I I really enjoyed the session. <laughs> so if there is no question, then we will close for the day. So ladies and no, the gentleman did not come. Ladies, what do we say to Miss Rusman? What's my using two accounts? Yes, so I'm at work, so I had to join from my PC. And then oh, I really? joined from my Sorry. phone so that I can observe some things. Oh, okay. That's sacrificial. Thank you. <laughs> Not my sentence. So what do we tell Miss Rosemont? Uh, retail. Is retail here? Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell Mr. Ponsa on behalf of mentorship with DAT. Hello, Miss Miss Mine. be prepared in and out of season. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, Ms. Rosemont. So on behalf of Ms. Jays and then the entire mentorship class of 2023, I want to say thank you so much for your time that you dedicated to come and teach us about social networking and then relationships. Say God will bless you for everything that you have shared with us. And we pray that God will help us keep them to work. We didn't just be there to work, but we'll be able to keep them to work. Thank you so much for your time and we really appreciate it. What we do today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Rosemont. I am so much grateful. And on behalf of my mentees, I say thank you so much and God bless you. Yeah. Everything that you are expecting before the end of the year, may God give it to you and make you happy before December end. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we will pray and then we will we'll just close. But Cindy, I want, to say, <laughs> I want to say something to you about this. This Votarian thing. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> but honestly it's becoming something else you know but something i have always learned is that you should not live such that wherever you go someone will be able to identify who you are exactly i don't i don't even know how to say it for you to understand live your life say that your identity cannot be seen or cannot be known no matter what so you I, I I'm not saying that you should not speak your language or something, but there are you know there are some things that are associated with um 
Ashanti, there are things that are associated with Votarians. I mean, people have associated with them, and I know that it's not all of them portraying that thing, but it's like a generational something. Try as much as possible to know all of these things and then build yourself, say that you cannot be identified as a Voltarian or as an Ashanti, something like that. So if you look at someone and you cannot really find the roots of where the person is coming coming from, and all you could trace is that, oh, this person is a Christian, that is it. You are almost there. And don't take these things to heart because the fact that you are, the fact that I am, um, I don't know, you guys do even know where I'm coming from. <laughs> I will even mention it. <laughs> you know, the, the fact that you are from a certain tribe, doesn't mean that there are people there who are not good. So you don't be all defensive and be sad when they mention this, that, 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 you know. And even latest news, per what this lady has done, um, what's the name of the lady? Deborah something, something, who sealed the, the sugar daddy. And, <laughs> and all of that. It's even adding more injuries. <laughs> <laughs> it's even adding more injury. So, so just chill and you develop yourself to be the person that you want to be seen and don't feel bothered about because you cannot carry the whole of your uh, your um your tribe on your head. No matter what you do, there are bad nuts, there are good nuts. So focus on yourself and you become what you want to become and you will create a good image for the rest of them. Um, on this Grace, note, we... yes, please. hello, yes, just to add yeah. up to what you said, okay, let your identity mm -hmm. be Christ. I mean, we are sure, all Christians, exactly. we are all believers, just let your identity be Christ. It's, I, I think that solves it all for all of us. That, so, that's the summary of everything I said. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> right? Shall we say with a prayer, Sister Debbie? My beloved, <laughs> but how did you come here? I did not send you any link. <laughs> I didn't send you any link. So how did you enter this place? <clears throat> you do not talk. If you do not talk here, don't enter my DM. <laughs> don't enter my DM and go and come and harass me. <laughs> Okay, so I say a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those conversations with your daughters. Thank you for always blessing us with knowledge and teaching us how we should order our steps in every sphere of life. Thank you for using your daughter Rosemont to teach us what you want us to know. We pray that whatever we have learned, we will not just throw it away. We will not just be listeners, but we will be just doers and listeners as well. Help us to be able to apply this knowledge in the various places that we need to apply. And when we come across any situation that needs us to apply this, may you remember us. May we hear a voice behind us saying this is the way and we should pursue it. We commit the week into your hands. We ask that you will be with us. As we've talked about time management, watching the clock, may you help us that you will watch the clock. May we not waste the time, the precious time that you've given us as gifts, but may we make every use of it that it will be profitable unto us and we'll be able to use them for building of character, building ourselves and becoming the people that you want us to be. Thank you for an answered prayer. And we commit our minds also into your hands. May you give us a sound sleep. Those that work, Lord, may you take care of them and bring them home safely. And give your beloved daughters here a sound sleep. That when we wake up to see tomorrow, God willing, you will say we will rejoice and be glad in you. Thank you, Father, for an answered prayer. And we appreciate your presence here in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Study.
I'm full of surprises. Mm. I know, right? <laughs> I don't even know how you got the link. I didn't post the my stuff. <laughs> okay. So we've closed for today. I hope you all enjoyed today's um today's mentorship. And if someone is doing the presentation, and I'm not to ask for me. Open air for. I say <laughs> I cannot do on the way for last last week was was David, and this week is you. Next week is someone else. How I'm feeling myself right now. It's always good to have help, you know, the support systems. Thank you, Wilson, for today. You're welcome. Amen. We hope to see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always available. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, bye, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye.